the door, Bree. Give me a break, would you? I don't want to do this any more than you do. I need to do this. You know what I mean. Forget it, okay? You started it. Then I'm stopping it. Can we just talk like normal people? You think this is normal? That's not what I meant. Don't twist my words around. I'm not twisting anything. I said forget it. Fine. I told Aaron I would be home by dinner, but whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. I haven't been in this room in eight years? Nine. Nine years? Jesus. It was a long time ago. Yeah, it was. So, where's Joe? Out. Where did he? He's out, OK? As requested. Look, it's nothing personal against the guy. I just can't stand him. Well, if it's any consolation, he doesn't like you either. Yeah, well, it's hard to like a guy when he's screwing your wife. Ex-wife. Not when he started screwing you. Is this really what you want to do today? Maybe you should just go. I'm being an asshole. I'm sorry. So am I. You're not being an asshole. I'm just sorry. <laughs> Let's pause and catch our breath here, okay? Where do you want me to start, Bri? Bree? I don't know. I don't know. I see you started to pack up some of her clothes. I was going to give them to Rebecca. Your sister's kid? But the thought of them on anyone else. Well, I couldn't bear the thought. I'm going to donate them. You're welcome to see if there's anything in there you might want before it goes. Okay. Oh, my. Oh, 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 my. Remember this? <laughs> Her princess dress. Of course I remember. Our Friday night dinners out were a big affair. Hmm. She always insisted on dressing up. She even made me do her makeup. She wanted to be pretty like Mommy. Huh. Well, this is the dress she always wore. And there's probably a tiara around here somewhere, too. Chelsea, the little princess. Chelsea, the big princess. She kept wearing that until she couldn't squeeze into it anymore. <laughs> I'm going to take this if that's okay with you. Sure. Okay. I think so. Okay. Uh, just. Just what? Don't let Carrie wear it. But she's the perfect age and it will look great on her. Just don't. Promise me. Why? Because it's our memory. It's not for you and Aaron. <clears throat> okay. Promise. I promise, okay? She sends her love, by the way. Aaron? She's not as bad as you think, Bree. And she loved Chelsea like her own daughter. Did she? Don't get like this. Like what, Keith? How am I supposed to get exactly, Keith? Don't get like this when I talk about Aaron. But it's okay for you to get like this when I bring up Joe. Totally different, and you know it. At least he never turned his back on her. Low Bree. Neither did I. When was the last time you actually talked to her face to face? I knew what was going on. You weren't there every day. You didn't see it. I knew what was going you on. You didn't see it! This isn't the time for this, Bree. No, it isn't. That time has passed. Just like her. Right in the gut. Well done, but that was always your gift. Chelsea wouldn't have wanted this, this between us. It's all we know. I texted her a few weeks ago. A text? Yeah, I know. How you doing, champ? Smiley face, and she didn't even respond. You could have at least tried to call. 
I wanted to. I did. I just didn't get around to it. I didn't think... Your gift. I didn't think I'd never get another chance. Are you looking for sympathy from me? I had to watch everything. I'm sorry, Brie. What do you want me to say to you? You should have said it to her. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you. We need to get through this. You know what? Just take what you want. Take whatever you want. No, we said we would do this together. Uh, we did, didn't we? We said we would go through her room together, you and I. And here we are. Here we are. It's so funny. What would Chelsea say if she saw us like this? In the same room? In the same bed. Sky is falling? Armageddon. <laughs> Do you remember the last time she caught us in bed together? When she was four? <laughs> oh yes, I remember. She came walking in, rubbing her tired little eyes. Marched right up to the side of the bed. I did not know that she was there. Well, we were a little busy. <laughs> remember what she said? Daddy, you're crushing mommy! I can hear her screaming all the way down the hall! <laughs> Oops. Right? <laughs> okay. I think I'm ready. Let's go on. Yeah? Sounds good. I don't know what to do. Maybe I can work on packing up some of her books or her records. Okay. Hey, Aubrey. What? I'm sorry you were the one who had to find her. Like that. I'm not. I'm glad it was me. And not some stranger in a strange place she only went to get. When I walked in here, I knew she was gone. I knew she was gone the moment I saw her lying there. Must have been. I couldn't even move. Not for three hours. I just sat on the bed holding her hand. And finally Joe came home and he had to call 911 and pick me up and carry me out. It's silly, isn't it? No, not silly at all, Bray. He kept saying, how did this happen? How did this happen? How did this happen? And I kept saying, please, just let me go back to her. Please just let me go back. Ah, say what you want about Joe, but he held me together. It's just too bad he didn't get there earlier. Maybe we could have. We? I don't remember seeing you there, Keith. You know what I mean. Again with that. I don't know what you mean. There is no we. Maybe if she was with me that day, then things would have been different. She wasn't welcome in your home, Keith. You kicked her out, remember? You know why Aaron made me do that? Because she's a bitch. Because Chelsea was stealing everything. There wasn't going to be a home left to kick anyone out of. What a coward. What a pile of shit. You couldn't stand up to Aaron if your life depended on it. Or someone else's life. That's not fair. You know that counselor told us to stop enabling her. You were there. She said this would be the best thing for her. We thought we were making the right choice at the time. Whatever helps you sleep at night. Do you think I sleep? I don't think I've slept at night in four years. Finally, we agree on something. I don't even know why we're fighting about this. What does it matter now? I just thought I owed you this. It's what she would have wanted. She hated that we didn't talk. Yeah, and we couldn't get past it. Not even for her. This is our fault. We used each other as a weapon against each other. So sick and twisted. We drove her to this. You don't believe that? Are we so terrible? 
Are we getting what we deserved? I'm going to work on the bookshelf. Oh. Why? Hello there, Mr. Puddles. Uh, I remember you. Mr. Puddles, the world's cuddliest bear. Ah, uh, no, no, that's not what she said. I know, puddliest. She couldn't <laughs> say her C's when she first got him. But he didn't like being wet. Oh, no, sir, he did not. Just because his name was Mr. Puddles doesn't mean he liked to be wet. <laughs> and she made sure everyone knew it. Every single person she met. <laughs> Mr. Puddles. He has seen better days. Well-worn old bear. Well-loved old bear. That he was. Do you remember that day we went to the amusement park just a few months after she got him? Adventure World, I remember. And Mr. Puddles had to come along. <laughs> she took him everywhere. <laughs> and we couldn't simply leave him in the car when we got there. Well, he'd be lonely in the car. That was her argument. Mr. Puddles had to come in. Had to. He was about as big as she was then. And she carried him around the whole day. I'll give her that. I offered to carry him, but she would have none of it. <laughs> Seeing him reminds me of that log flume ride. <clears throat> Do you remember that old friend? It's funny what comes to mind sometimes, isn't it? I remember us getting in line, and when Chelsea saw the water, she started to panic. I could see it in her eyes. Although, I don't know how she could see anything with that bear in her hands, he was so big. I told her we didn't have to go on the ride, but she said she really wanted to, and so did Mr. Puddles. She said, we're brave, Mommy. We're brave, Mommy. And then you and I were looking at each other like, how is this gonna work out? And finally, it's our turn to get in the boat. And she looks up at me and she says, I cannot let Mr. Puddles get wet. I promised I'd take care of him, and she burst into tears. And then that boy, he couldn't have been more than 16, that boy running the ride, he comes over and he asks if everything's okay, and, and Chelsea tells him about Mr. Puddles, and then he says, wait here. And then he, he comes back with a trash bag, and then together he and Chelsea make a little raincoat for Mr. Puddles. And everyone had to wait in line, but he said he didn't care because he had a little sister, and he knew how important Mr. Puddles was to our Chelsea. And I kissed him right on the cheek. <laughs> and for one very brief moment, Chelsea did ask me to hold Mr. Puddles, just long enough so she could give that boy a hug. <laughs> this hurts so much. Tell me what to say to make it go away. I don't want it to ever go away. She was special. She was ours. Should have told Erin the old fuck herself. And that counselor. I should have never let her push me into pushing her out. If I could take it back. Well, you can't. But if I could. You do what, huh? Save the day? I just tell her I loved her. That's all. You know who would love Mr. Puddles? Carrie. Oh, I don't think so. No, she would. No, I mean, no, she can't have him. Is Mr. Puddles going to be donated to? I don't know yet. Fine. Well, would you at least consider it? Can I ask you something? She can't have the fucking bear. Not about Mr. Puddles. What? What is it? When she got out of her last rehab, you told me you were watching her like a hawk practically 24 hours a day, you said. I was. She wasn't even allowed to leave the house without you, you said. Poor Joe. Whatever. No friends, no visitors, nothing. Just meetings, doctors, and home. That's right, and her therapist. Well, if you were with her all the time. What are you driving at? If you were with her all the time, then where did she get the stuff that- Killed her? 
Don't you think I've asked myself that same question every minute of every day since I sat in this bed with her holding her hand for three hours? I went through every inch of this room with her every night. Do you think I liked having her dump out her drawers in front of me every day? I made her piss in a goddamn cup in front of me, for Christ's sakes. The humiliation she must have felt. But I refused to apologize for it because she was clean and that's all that mattered. And this room was clean. It just doesn't make any sense. None of this makes any sense, you self-righteous son of a bitch. Are you blaming me? No, Bree, I am not blaming well, that's you. That's what it sounds like. You were not there, remember? You do not know what it was like. You made your point. You know what? I, I'm done with this. I'm done with you. Just take whatever you want and get out. Fine. I'll take it, Mr. Puddle. No, anything but him. Listen, I'm sorry, but I'm going to override you on this. I'd rather see him go to Carrie than to Goodwill. Override me? Your spoiled, shitty little daughter can't have him. Heaven forbid Mr. Puddles gets a second chance to make another little girl happy, and her sister no less. Bree, it would mean a lot if I could take him. No. Bree, stop. It's just a stuffed animal. If you really thought that, then you wouldn't care so badly. I would like to take something, anything away from this, and maybe do something good with this. I'm begging you. I will not yield. I don't care. You never did, and that's why I left you. You cannot hurt me, Keith. I am beyond that. I will not give him up. God, I hate you like this. If she were here, if Chelsea were here, she would gladly give Mr. Puddles to Carrie. But Chelsea isn't here, is she? And she never ever will be here again. I'm taking No, you're not. Bree, you're acting insane. Just, just let go. You of let go of him. You no. may not have Mr. Puddles. Let go. Give him to me. Give him to me. Give him to me. stuffed with anything, Bree, and you wouldn't have known. No matter how many drawers you turned out, no one could. She did. Do you think Chelsea knew we loved her? I'm sure she did. Then why couldn't she stay clean and sober? You have? Fifteen years. You know, Took her to a meeting about three months ago before she went in for her last rehab. She didn't much care for meetings and she always let me know about it. They're not for everyone, I guess. As she was getting out of the car, she turned to me and she said, Dad, it's going to work this time. I know it. Don't give up on me. Like I ever could. And I told her, don't give up on yourself. And that was the last time I saw her. If you think you're the only one hurting, Brady, my insides are as torn apart as Mr. Puddles. Ever since, she, ever since. I have just been going through the motions until it hits me that I'm never going to see my Chelsea again. And I don't think I can face that. I don't think I can and I don't even know if I want to. I 
tried, I tried to save her, Bree, but she was so... This, this thing, this addiction, you can't, you can't save them all. I only wanted you to save one. We made this about us. We've always made this about us. It's about her and her pain. I, uh, I think I'm gonna go, Bray. I am exhausted. <laughs> Maybe I can come back later? No. Wait. Let's not end like this. I, I have something to show you. Look, high school graduation. Oh my god, not that picture. <laughs> <laughs> She's the one who made us take it together. Mom and Dad, can we just be a family for one day? Just one lousy day. <laughs> and we still fought her tooth and nail. I don't remember fighting her. Oh, that's right. <laughs> All those years we were married, you couldn't keep your hands off me. And then for 30 seconds, she asked you to put your arm around me and... No, no, I just didn't want you to get the wrong idea, Bree. That you hated me. No. Bree, I don't hate you. Truth is, I never could. Besides, Chelsea wouldn't let me. Not that I didn't want to, if it makes you feel any better. It actually kind of does. <laughs> ah, that is some picture, isn't it? It's a good one. It's the last time I remember her looking really happy. Look at that smile. Listen, um, this is hard, but would you like to take it with you? I'm sure Chelsea's little sister would like to see how beautiful her big sister really was. She was beautiful and kind, like her mother. And that's generous, but no, this picture belongs here with you. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. But, look at this room. Oh, we have a long way to go. You want me to take care of that closet? Not yet. Can we just sit here a little longer? I like that. with them idiots are up to now? What idiots? The same ones. Oh, them. What are they up to? Shenanigans. Damn shenanigans. It's idiots. That's what I'm saying. Always up to their shenanigans. <laughs> What's a five-letter word means work? I don't know. It starts with an R. Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> Too many letters. It's brazen is what it is. You, you see here what they're doing? with their tariffs and taxes and commissions and subsidies and non-binding resolutions. Look here, Adam. I don't know much, but I know what I know. And that's enough for me to know that them, their idiots, are up to their brazen shenanigans again, and I won't stand for it. Not this time. What are you going to do, Kenny? I am considering running for office. Again? <laughs> I've got the backing to get my name on the ballot. Again? This time will be different. How so? I might run unopposed. <laughs> Something smells good. Pumpkin chocolate chip, fresh from the oven. Mm. You want one? Not just yet, but set one aside for me for the walk home. Fresh from the oven. I like it to settle a bit. I'll <laughs> save one for you then. Thank you. Kenny, do you want one set aside? No, thank you, Beverly. My damn doctor says I can't. 
He's got me on Adam. Did I tell you what my damn doctor had me on on the cut of my blood pressure, he says? You did not. Kale! Goddamn kale! <laughs> kale chips, kale salad, kale loaf. They make a loaf. They make a loaf. Honey, you think I should stock more kale? Because I'm afraid I'm out of it at the moment. Jim comes by tomorrow with a fresh bunch. But I know Molly comes by today with the potatoes. I can see if she has some kale. I don't want any kale. Well, we have, uh, oh, seaweed crackers. What seaweed? has this country come to? <laughs> yeah, the kids love them. My day, you wanted seaweed. You went down to the shore and picked some off the rocks. And you darn well didn't eat it. What did you do with it? You flung it at your brother like you're supposed to. <laughs> That's all this stuff is good for. Well, I heard there's a woman in Portland who makes sexual lubricant from seaweed for sex. <laughs> How is your brother, Ken? He's still in Florida? A golf carts and yoga classes. That ain't my kind of living. I don't know how those folks even get up in the morning without something to do. You just said they were golfing and taking yoga classes. I mean something useful. Like what? Like this morning, I woke up and rake the leaves out of the gutter. <laughs> well, that is something. You darn right it is. It shows I take care of my own. Down in Florida, it's all hired hands in jumpsuits using drones. Drones. I've seen them leaf-raking drones. Kenny, <laughs> I found some uh, seaweed, kale, coconut chips. You want those on your tab? Sure, Bev. What do the guys in the jumpsuits do? Fly at the drones. Morning, Bev. Molly. Morning, gentlemen. Morning, Molly. Morning. 100 pounds worth of potatoes. Oh, honey, I only ordered 50. We had extra. <laughs> I can really only use the 50. Half price? I'll take the ones you don't need, Beverly. Ah, we got more in the truck, Adam, if you'd like a box. We ended up with a lot more potatoes than we counted on this year. Have you got me kale? <laughs> Kenny's doctor says he needs some more. Stupid kale. Fresh out of kale. Plenty of potatoes, though. Overflowing with potatoes I can't give away, and the kids need new winter jackets and boots. <laughs> Christmas presents, maybe. Food. Aren't you a farmer? Yes. Then you have food, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I've got potatoes. I could use 100 pounds after all. I can make needles. I'll take a box, please, Molly. Thank you, Adam. What? Wouldn't you like a box of potatoes? What do I need 50 pounds of potatoes for? Mashed potatoes, baked potatoes. <laughs> Potatoes au poivre. Don't you go speaking French at me. <laughs> Fine. Box of potatoes. The wife will think of something. That's great. That's great. Thank you. I'll have the kids toss them in your trucks. Oh, sorry. Hi. Excuse me. Hello. I am just getting 50 pound boxes of potatoes for everyone. Would you like one? No, I'm a one potato at a time person. <laughs> I'm potato intolerant. Oh. <laughs> I've never heard of that. It's new. <laughs> is that pumpkin chocolate chip? Yes, it is, Mr. Awesome. Fresh from the oven. I should. I shouldn't. I should. I shouldn't. This is the store, Teresa. Beverly's family. How long has your family owned this store? Well, my great-great-great-great-grandfather opened the Graves General Store in... 1845, but we've been around for so long. People just call it the store. It's wonderful. I could just... Well, Rossum, when you said it was... Well, it is, isn't it? Oh, it is. <laughs> Folks from away. Very much so. That's the Richard Rossum that bought Fisher's Island. That's the guy? With that big house on it. That guy? <laughs> that guy. Ooh, Rossum. Nope, it's a big yeah. I believe I will have that cookie, Beverly. Today is a big day. Why is that, Mr. Awesome? Today is the day we turn it on. Turn what on? The box. What box? The box. I'm sorry, Mr. Awesome. I have no idea what you're talking about. He's talking about a box. Yeah, I know, Kenny. <laughs> what's in the box? AI. What the heck's AI? It's a computational process whereby a computer can think for itself. 
Also known as deep learning. Who said what now? No, that's not quite right, although that is along the right line. But, but the box, this box is, is different. Much different. Well, what is it? Oh, I shouldn't tell you. It's classified and all that. Aha! The government, what have I been saying? No, the development of the box is strictly a private enterprise endeavor. Big industry. Well, eventually, it will be big, though not quite now. Although on a, a space-time equalation, the event has already happened, and therefore, it is big! <laughs> <laughs> Although from a chromotheotetical relativity scale, it is really quite infinitesimal. It's going to be amazing. It's going to change everything. Well, no, Teresa, it will not change everything. Gravitational forces will remain the same on an interstellar level. We should be able to manipulate terrestrial gravitational attractions, point-specific location, but that is still years and years away. Just what the heck are you on to? Deep learning? AI? Artificial intelligence? Well, sort of, but what... Are you making robots? as to likely replace the human race and cause us to go extinction? No, 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 you see. Now you look here, mister. I may not know much, but I know I ain't getting replaced by no robot. Oh, you definitely could be replaced by a robot. The hell you say? <laughs> Almost anything anyone does in the course of a day could be done by a robot. The hell it does. What have you done today? I woke up, made coffee, raked the leaves, and came down here to have a talk with Adam. You woke up, a robot can wake up. You made coffee, a robot can make coffee. You raked the leaves, a robot can oh, make All right, but you don't see any robot coming down here to have a chat with Adam. That's something no robot could do. <laughs> Actually, that is precisely what the box will do. What is it? A box. It's the box. <laughs> no, it's, it's a box, a prototype. The box is something more. Uh, but that is why I needed to buy the island. I needed more space. I needed a granite walled server area. Uh, but this box is linked to the box, which, while not yet fully functional, should be adequate for a brief demonstration. What's it going to do? Well, let's find out. <laughs> Morning, Adam. <laughs> Domo arigato. You read what them idiots are up to? <laughs> what are they up to? Damn to no <laughs> The inflections need a bit of work. You don't say. I does say, drain the swamp. Is that right? I'm gonna run for office. How's it no one running for office? Oh, Kenny, again? It cross-references your social media posts and your career history. It's got my vote. I'm in the place. <laughs> What's a five-letter word means work starts with an R? Rumble still skin. <laughs> Shouldn't it know the answer to that? You have hit on the truly revolutionary principles behind my work. What is that? <laughs> In order to be truly personal, the box needed to know what not to know. I don't know much, but I know enough to not know things. Good God! <laughs> You've created artificial ignorance. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Think about all the things people don't know. And think about all of the things people think they know. And all of the things people know they don't know but think they know. And all of the things they're just too lazy to find out about. And multiply that by the mysteries of the universe. It took me ten years to write that algorithm. <laughs> Replace! Get a job, you loafer. Just like that? I suppose I could be replaced just as easily just to have two boxes sitting here carrying on. Oh no, if we had two boxes, they'd converse on a completely different dualectic linguistic plane. But of course, they're connected on a micro level. So it's really just one box having a conversation yes. with itself about the vast store of knowledge it doesn't want to deal with, which, as we found out last week, nearly led to a catastrophic event. Oh, <laughs> the island almost blew up. <laughs> Happily, I introduced a fantasy sports subroutine, and that vented the excess <laughs> of <laughs> am, am I supposed to be replaced, too? No, Beverly, no. Well, you could be. Well, but who would make the cookies? In a non hominid scenario, there wouldn't be any cookies. No. Would it? No. That's so sad. <laughs> oh, dear, I, I see we've upset you. 273 years of the business gone in one day. You 
You've got some nerve, mister. Well, this is just theoretical. We're, we're positing possible outcomes. I'm about to posit my foot in your butt. <laughs> hey, Adam, I didn't see your truck out there. He walked into town, always trying to lose an extra 15 pounds. Mr. Fitness over here. What's that? The box. Like one of those Alexas? Much different than Alexa. Oh, it's, it's deep learning. It's organizing, it's researching, it's connecting the dots. It's ignoring any and all possible outcomes that are not correlated with deep-seated cultural prejudices and mystical beliefs. It's going to replace us all with deadly robots. This here is the prototype. These two have a bigger one out on their private island. It's going to replace me and get rid of Beverly, and there won't be any potato farms or pumpkin chocolate chip cookies ever again. Well, maybe. You're all just a bunch of lazy bastards. <laughs> you want to know something? You ask Alexa. You need to get somewhere. You Google Map. You want your floors vacuumed or your leaves raked or your crops watered. You turn on a machine. We have replaced you. We are the now. Ah! We are the future. Ah! <laughs> you go on back to your island, mister. We are angry. And we got lots of potatoes. Chicago is shut down. All non-essential vehicles, including buses and taxis, are banned from the roads. We hope to have flights up and running in the morning. National Geographic. That's my kind of magazine. Grand Canyon. Elephants. African tribes. Mount Everest. That's nice. Uh, I try to avoid the articles. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Oh, so much wasted time. <laughs> so, anything good? If I tell you, will you let me read in peace? I give you my word. It's an article on time management. Intriguing. Any white rhinos? I thought you said... Okay, you're right. Ha, 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 ha. 
Are you afraid of dogs? Uh, me too. I was bit by a chihuahua once. But I bit him back. He never was the same after that. And I blame myself. You don't give up easily, do you? <clears throat> Not when it comes to chihuahuas. So how about you and me strike up a conversation? You really don't read? Oh, I was just trying to get your attention. So where are you headed, or is it too soon to ask that question? Milwaukee. <sighs> and Stephanie. Now, don't think this is a line about. You look kind of familiar. Really? Yeah. We weren't married, were we? No. I think yeah. I'd remember that. Identical twins? I don't think so. <coughs> Let's try this. Where are you from? Houston. Houston? Me too. What part of Houston? Nassau Bay. Steph. Stephanie Marshall. Andy. Andy Wright. Andy. Oh my god. <laughs> Long time. <laughs> I'll say. <laughs> you look good. Well, so do you. No, really. You look good. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. Imagine that. George and Emily at O'Hare International. It's a long way from Grover's Corners. <laughs> you remember. Remember. I can still see that yellow bow in your hair. And you in those baggy pants and those shoes. It was a period piece, and bless you for not mentioning Gagney. Our Town is still my favorite play. Emily, I have a favor to ask you. What's that, George? <laughs> Emily, if I go away to State Agricultural College next year, would you write me a letter once in a while? I certainly will. I certainly will, George. And I'll try to make them interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the Nassau players? Uh, They're doing our town this fall. I remember senior year we went to see <laughs> Driving Miss Daisy. Right? You know my favorite part. Afterwards, making out in the car. Woo! What a kisser. Oh my god, don't make me blush. <laughs> They were just kids. I know. So what are you up to these days? From the looks of it, it's not sheetrocking. <laughs> You're not that far off, actually. Real estate. I took over my dad's company. Really? Wasn't it, like, huge? It still is. <laughs> That's why I'm going to Milwaukee, a new downtown office building. But whatever happened to the next Merrill Street? We don't all get to pursue our dreams. But didn't you go to Baylor to study theater? I did. But I still worked for my dad's company. He was old school. He saw acting as a hobby, not a career. And when I got out, well... Mm, child seeking the parents' approval. Isn't it always? What about you? Did you ever pursue acting? You seem to entertain pretty well yourself. Uh, I never went after acting. Let's face it, no one's going to confuse me with De Niro. You were the one with the chops. The only reason I got the role of George was because Stuart Lasky got mono. Stuart Lasky. <laughs> That's a jerk. Yeah, but he did have great hair, though. Uh, I knew I wasn't going to make it acting, but uh, I did enjoy making people laugh. Of course. Bottom in Midsummer Night's Dream, you had them howling. In those pants shoes. Once again, it was a period piece. <laughs> so what happened? Well, I spent a couple of years at Texas on college loans, but some of us didn't have the same resources as, say, your family. Which my father never failed to point out. He usually got what he wanted. 
I know. So, did you meet your soulmate and live happily ever after? I did, but it wasn't a person. <laughs> okay, now I'm hooked. Well, college wasn't for me, dropped out. Uh, did odd jobs around Austin for a couple of years. Then I read this article about clown school in Florida, Ringling Brothers. <laughs> And I must have written them a good letter because they offered me a scholarship and two years later I was on that train, that mile long circus train, and I rode it for nearly 23 years. Wow. You ran away and joined the circus. You can say that. Well, at least one of us pursued our dreams. Until they folded up the tents a few years back. Oh, I saw that. Did you ever get married? Mm -hmm. Married? The circus doesn't really fit with a normal family life. You know, the wife, kids, and minivan. But there was this one gal, Angela. She trained the dogs. Beautiful, warm. She got sick. Cancer. I'm sorry. Yeah, the circus became my family after that. Until we all went our separate ways. What about now? I settled in Tampa. My brother lives in St. Pete. It's surprising how well you can do between birthday parties and Uber. <laughs> don't you miss it though, circus? I do. And I don't. My body isn't getting any younger and, you know, it was a grind all right. All those shows and all that travel. But I did miss the kids though. And not just the laughs. It was, it was something in their eyes. Man, I look into their faces and I don't know, sometimes I, I think of them as my own children. I don't even give them names. <laughs> oh, birthday parties, it's just not the same. It's business, you know, the contracts, deposits. It's not the greatest show on earth. Wow. What about you? You expect me to follow that? I do. I want to know everything. Uh, do you remember that film we saw senior year of high school, The um, the Last Temptation of Christ. With all the protesters outside. Yes. At the end of the movie, when Christ is on the cross and he's offered the opportunity to go back and lead a different life, a normal life, do you ever think about that? Yeah, more than once. I never did. But then I turned 40 and it kind of crept in. And? And? Hey, I gave it up just now. Ambition is not all it's cracked up to be. And not just because I'm a woman, there is always a cost. Always. Time is this great compromise. Eventually, you've got to pay the piper. So, what happened? Well, after college, I moved into my dad's company, and surprisingly, I loved it. For a while, anyway. The, the deals, the business suits, power lunches, respect. Sounds like a lot. And I fell in love, I got married, I had two beautiful children. I thought I could do it all. Loving wife, doting mother, and still climb the real estate ladder all the way to the top. It's quite a bit to juggle. Too much, turns out. Peter, my ex-husband, he had his own career. He was a corporate lawyer. And when the kids were young, we were fine. We shared the parenting. But as they got older, my job required more and more travel. I was gone a lot. That didn't help my marriage. I grew apart. Kids. I missed a lot of basketball games and dance recitals and honor societies. You could stop me any time. Oh no, I did ask for everything. Peter and I got divorced 11 years ago. I thought that was hard, but it was nothing compared to the custody battle. I thought it would be joint custody. Peter wanted to play hardball. He made me out to be the bad guy, the absentee parent. Judge agreed. So, 
he got custody. And I got holidays. No do-overs in life. Steph, none of us are born with a road map. Or a GPS. <laughs> or a GPS. So, where are your kids now? Trent is a junior at Brown. Megan is a freshman at Rice. Do you get to see them? Every chance I get. Especially now that they're out of the house. After Milwaukee, I'm going to see Trent for the weekend. He's on the basketball team. They have a game against Yale. Big rivalry. And I get to meet his girlfriend. I can't wait. <coughs> Maybe there are do-over stuff. Brand new dreams. Better dreams. How'd you get to be so smart? It's the red nose. <laughs> but don't tell anyone, I could get in a lot of trouble. Promise. Speaking of dreams, sleep dreams. Every few years I have this reoccurring dream, and you're in it. Really? <coughs> so we're in this museum with really high ceilings, and we're standing in front of this painting, but we're dressed as George and Emily. <laughs> Is it a painting of the ocean? Some kind of boat? And a lighthouse? Yes. <coughs> and is there a little girl in pigtails standing between us, holding our hands? Yes. I love that dream. I always wake up feeling so refreshed, so alive. Me too. How do you explain this? Maybe you don't. It is good to see you, Andy. It's really good. Maybe. <clears throat> Maybe what? <laughs> Maybe we could exchange contact information. <laughs> contact information. Is that code for phone numbers? <laughs> okay, you got me. You're not going to go put my number on bathroom walls, are you? No! <laughs> <laughs> did you get the letter from NASA High about the 30-year reunion in June? Mm -hmm, I did. I never go to those things. Oh, me either. I'm always afraid I'm going to run into Stuart Lasky. He's probably bald by now. Serves him right. <laughs> so do you think you'll go? Maybe. You never told me where you're headed. Spokane. Spokane? What's in Spokane? It's more of a who. I met someone. Well, not exactly met. We met online. She and I have been emailing back and forth for about six months now. Really? Yeah, we agreed to reveal just three things about ourselves. First name, age, and a picture. And we've spent the last six months talking about who we are, not what we are. And, I don't know, we just kind of fell in love. Really? I know this sounds crazy, right? You don't know anything else about her? Nothing. You know that circus act with the uh, Volkswagen bug and the clowns come piling out, like one after another, like dozens of them, and you wonder, what happens next? Yeah, that's what Spokane is for me. It's the wonder. What if? What if she's disappointed, or what if I'm disappointed? Yeah, I've thought about that. But, um... What if she's, what if she's the one? What if she's my doer? What is it? I 
wish I had your courage. I wish we both did 30 years ago. Remember that part about brand new dreams, better dreams? I wouldn't even know where to start. What about acting? Acting? At my age? Sure, you could uh, try out for our town. <laughs> Emma who old to be Emily. <laughs> but not her mother. You'd be a fabulous Mrs. Webb. You think? Why, you'd bring down the house. Hmm. Emily? Yes, George? I think this has been an important talk we've been having. selling something or canvassing for your local town manager or offering to mow your lawn well you're a bit old for that you'd be surprised I'm sorry I usually don't get this far with my pitch you got a pitch I usually don't get this far in the conversation well you're five questions deep so I'd say you're doing pretty well you count it <laughs> I'm making tea. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll let you get back to... You like a cup? Uh, it's tea. It's not a date. <laughs> <laughs> Am I following you? This ain't a lawn party. Shoes. Sorry. Will you stop that? Sorry? That. Sorry, uh, I have a habit of, sorry. I don't have cream or sugar. Black is fine. Decaf. Decaf is fine, thanks. So where does he get? So, where does what get? The conversation. You said it usually doesn't get this far. So where does it get? Are you Edward James? Like I said. It depends. Okay. Um, I'm looking for Edward James of Boston, Massachusetts. Well, that's a pretty common name around here. What's he done? Nothing. I owe him something. Money? I'm Edward James. <laughs> no, it's not money. A bill? Never heard of him. No, it's not anything. Just an apology. An explanation of sorts. Thanks for the tea. Where are you going? Like I said. Well, what makes you think I'm not your Edward James? I'm not sure my Edward James is your way with. Landishments? No, there's a word you don't hear every day. And that's your problem with the world right there. <laughs> Landishments? Words. We're losing them. We don't talk to one another. You got a point there, Mr. James. I didn't say my name was James. <laughs> no, you didn't. It's nice to meet you. You like tomatoes? I like tomatoes. You want to see my tomatoes? I grow them. I don't want to bother you. Well, you knocked on my front door. <laughs> Let's see your tomatoes. Shoes. Right. <clears throat> I've never been here before. Don't you think I know that? I mean, to this part of this neighborhood. It's quaint. Yeah, that's a word you don't hear every day. Quaint? Neighborhood. Boston used to have neighborhoods. Now we have districts, zones, parcels. It's like one big giant urban jigsaw puzzle. It's a realtor's wet dream. Yes. 
It's an unfortunate byproduct of verticalism. And that is heard every day, at least here. Been here a long time. My wife and I bought the house after the war. GI Bill. Took care of our soldiers then. You served? No, I just know a bit about post-war America. Which one? We've had a few post-war Americas. Sorry. World War II. What do you know? Just that our government would ensure that people like you, returning veterans, had a chance to get a leg up. And affordable housing, education, were the ways to ensure that those that did their duty had a more vertical climb in society. You're fast. Been told I'm a good listener. Anyway, it was the honorable thing to do for you guys. Looking after your own, taking responsibility for you. I don't think we do that anymore for our returning sons. You sure you're not canvassing? You sound like you're running for something. No, I'm not running. So what do you think? Beautiful. Yeah, they're hanging in there. What with the Indian summer. I usually have them all in by now. We've had our first frost, but they're still going strong. That's one resilient vegetable. I thought tomato was a fruit. Yes, and trees cause air pollution. Try one. Shouldn't we wash it first? Mm. I don't spray. I wash all my food before I eat it. Well, suit yourself. Beautiful. My wife. She made it? <laughs> She's in it. <laughs> Raku. She liked to throw things. <laughs> it really should be. No. Who is this Edward James of yours anyway? And I'm still not saying I am him, but if I were him, who would I be when I was? Well, it's kind of a curiosity, really. I don't really know him. I mean, we're not well acquainted. So why is he so important to you? Another good question. I'm full of them. Yes. Yes, you are. So? Well, may I? Will you stop being so damn polite? It's the way my mom raised me. You know, you got a good mother. I do. I did. She passed? Yes. Cancer? Yes. Ovarian? Breast. Yeah. Tough. Tough. Yes. Edward James. Yes, Edward James. I knew him. I knew of him when I was about 14. He uh, struck me as an enigma at first. What I knew of him was came in bits and pieces. Teacher, coach, boss, mailman, you're being a tad covert. Yeah, are you so sure you didn't serve special operations? I'm sure. You talk CIA. Sorry. Anyway, um, Edward James is a person in my life that I've known for, of, and now I want to, need to, tell him when I meet him, see him, that, to tell him that you owe him something. Yes. I'm a pretty good one, too. Listener. Uh, I'm impressed. With? You don't see many homes in urban settings with this much property, this much privacy. Yeah, there's a story there. I said there's a story there. Uh, I'd love to hear it. Now you're talking. So my wife and I bought this house in 46. We're the original owners. Then in 1968, the man whose land this belonged to, the man who chopped his farm up to make this neighborhood. Parcel? Very good. Anyway, he, he invited the four owners to, uh, you know, these two on my left over here and this one on my right. He made us an offer that he was going to sell off the remaining back lots under one condition. We all four of us had to go in on the deal. No, this one or that one. We all of us had to go in. So we sat down, decided to buy, 
16 years later, paradise. That's well, a little piece of it anyway. Pardon my intrusive question. Isn't every question intrusive? Yes. I guess you're right. Intrude? Do you and your wife, did you, do you have kids? No. I'm sorry. Don't be. You know, people die, people don't have kids. It's not the end of the world. Anyway, we couldn't have kids. Why do you ask? I thought that might have been the reason to buy the extra land. Kids like to play. Yeah, well, no. We just couldn't have them. We just wanted the land. What about adoption? <laughs> Intrusion. No, it's okay. It's a legitimate question. Uh, we couldn't have kids, and, you know, once we knew we couldn't have them, then the desire to want them went away. Just started to get used to it being just the two of us. And we just settled into that. I can relate. After my dad, it was just mom and me. At first, I was the typical kid, always wanting a baby brother or sister, but after a while, I got past the nag mom point and just settled down into just me and mom. Well, you had friends, didn't you? Yeah, I had friends, but it was always hard being around them because inevitably they'd start bragging about my dad this and my dad that. And, hey, where's your dad? Mm. Oh yeah, you don't got one, do you? Kids can be tough. Sometimes. Anyway, Edward James. Yes, <laughs> Edward James. So, for the past 25 years, I've been searching for Edward James to tell him that I'm sorry. For what? What did you do to him that you've had to track him down for all these years? I'm not sure I turned out to be the kind of man I think he would have wanted me to be. Now, I'm confused. This Edward James, it seems to me, based on the little you've told me, is, is somebody that you either haven't met or you barely knew or you bar barely had any contact with. So what could you possibly do to a stranger or, at best, a casual acquaintance? that would warrant searching for him for, what, 25 years, you said? Just about. 25 years? To say what? I don't know. But have you ever had something burning inside you, eating at you, that until you resolve that thing, or attempted to resolve that burning, that you just felt, I don't know. Incomplete. Incomplete. Yeah. Well, huh. huh, what is it? I've been talking to you for 20 minutes and I haven't even bothered to ask your name. Talk about not being raised right. David. My name's David. Edward. Maybe James, but let's just stick with Edward for now, huh? All right. Yeah. It's nice to meet you, Edward. Likewise. More tea? Sure. You stay here, I'll make you a cup. Don't get too close to the microwave, because they leak radiation, so don't get too close. Hmm. But you're a regular Encyclopedia Britannica. I like when I know things, like when I know to mind my own business. Have another tomato. One's my limit. Cautious man. <laughs> Sorts. Didn't your mother ever teach you to take risks? Yes, but... Whenever I get too close to taking a risk, I don't know, I just somehow walk away from it. Yes. In case it leaks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> your dad? My dad? Did he welcome you taking a risk? Sorry, intrusion. No, it's okay. It's a legitimate question. I'm not sure my dad and I were very close. Yeah, my old man and I didn't exactly see eye to eye either. We always kept kind of a cool distance from each other. What did he do? Auto mechanic. It's tough to find a good one. Dad or mechanic? <laughs> Both. Maybe. Maybe. Anyway, I didn't stick around long enough to find out. Once the war came, I enlisted and I never saw him again. Any desire? Desire to reconnect. 
Nah, that's your generation. Mine, walk out the door, don't look back, no hard feelings. Must leave you with some questions. I sleep very soundly at night. You're lucky. So, uh, when, if you uh, find your Edward James, what are you going to say to him? It's nice to meet you. Well, that's a start. <laughs> and then? I'm sorry I didn't turn out to be the son you wanted, Dad. Whoa! I missed something here. Back up a bit. This Edward James of yours is your father? I don't know. But I have questions. Wait, can I just give you a bit of advice? I would love your advice. Before you go introducing yourself to some stranger you've been tracking for 25 years, <laughs> who you owe or you think you owe some apology explanation for something you did or did not do, said, did not say, thing, make sure that whatever comes out of your mouth first ain't going to cause the guy to have a heart attack. Well, how would you advise me to start? Well, I mean, if this is somebody that you're unsure of, or you're confused about, or you're whatever about, you might want to start with small talk, and then, you know, kind of build up to dropping the bombshell. Nice weather we've been having? Yes, that, exactly. <laughs> start with the weather. The weather never got anybody into trouble. It certainly isn't going to get the door slammed in your face like, Hi, Dad! <laughs> oh, listen, I, I didn't mean to upset you. Don't listen to me. You do whatever you need to do with your Edward James. I'm sure it's all going to work out. Anyway, you got better things to do than talk to some old cook who grows tomatoes and asks too many questions. I've enjoyed this. Me too. Got a last name? Anderson. Anderson. Huh. I knew an Anderson once. Gloria Anderson, her name was. Hmm. She was a cocktail waitress. This was during the war. Wow, did she have a set. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't mean to be crude. I know you're not supposed to talk about women that way these days. It gets you into trouble. Uh. Hey, did you see that vice presidential debate last week? That Geraldine Ferraro, she grew a pair of it quick, huh? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, ah, Gloria Anderson. Huh. Let's put it this way. The fellas were always very generous with her tip jar. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know, I know. I'm from a different generation. I'm embarrassed you, haven't I? I'm not afraid of language. Well, I should watch mine. She was something, though. Did you know her well? In the biblical sense, you mean? In any sense. Well, let's just say that Gloria and I shared a night of more than small talk. You went out on a date? We went. My one regret, though, is that I uh, strayed from my wife that night. I mean, we weren't married yet, but we were serious, and uh, we had planned on marrying when I got home from the war. But that night with old Gloria, I sure wasn't practicing my catechism. <laughs> You and Gloria were intimate. Now there's a word you don't hear every day. Um, I'll spare you the glory details. Anyway, I, uh, the next day I woke up and I tiptoed out of her room and I quietly slipped back into my dutiful life. But I never have forgotten old Gloria. Geez, I wonder what happened to her. I haven't thought about her for 40 years. Oh, what happens to any of us? We get old, we die. We grow tomatoes. We grow tomatoes. 
well, I better be going. Off to find your Edward James, huh? Yes, off to find my Edward James. You sure you don't owe him money? I'm sure. You know, because I uh, I could be your Edward James. In a pinch. Just say the word. Sorry I didn't turn out to be the son you wanted, Dad. But isn't it nice weather we've been having? <laughs> uh, don't start like that, jeez. Small talk? <clears throat> Very small talk. Maybe I'll tell him the story of another Edward that grows tomatoes and likes decaffeinated tea and has a lovely parcel of land in what used to be a neighborhood. There you go. Tell him that story. You can even throw in old Gloria. In the tip jar? Very generous tip jar. It was nice to meet you, Edward. It's nice to meet you, son. I wouldn't have minded, you know, being your Edward James. I wouldn't have minded. You'd have been a great one. You think? No question. No question in my mind at all. Willie, I, I can't cry. I don't know what it is, but I, I just can't cry. I don't understand it. Why would you ever do that? Help me, Willie. I just can't cry. It just seems to me you're just on another trip. I keep expecting you. Willie, dear. Can't cry. <laughs> Why'd you do it? I, I search and I search and I search and I don't understand it, Willie. I made the last payment on the house today. Today, dear. And there's no one home. We're free and clear. We're free. We're free! <laughs> Willie! Now, Linda, don't get excited. Oh, but you're. How could you be? Well, we heard the car drive away. You died. I, I ain't dead, Linda. I'm alive. Alive, I'm telling you. <laughs> How? Uh, we heard the car drive off. We heard the crash. Linda, it was the most amazing thing. There I am, driving as fast as I can, ready to end it all. When, out of nowhere, there's this bright light and a bunch of crazy colors. And suddenly everything's different. I'm in a strange new world. Turns out, I drove right through the space-time continuum. <laughs> the what? A portal, Linda, an entryway into the future. You drove into the future. I, I turned down some dark side street, and bam! I'm transported through an interdimensional gateway. Next thing I know, I'm racing across time. Oh, well, Willie. That's impossible. I mean, people can't travel through time. There's no magical portal in Brooklyn. Uh, uh, this wasn't Brooklyn. It was up in the Bronx. Ah, <laughs> the Bronx. <laughs> oh, I seen amazing things, Linda. Uh, marvelous advances in human achievement. Medicine, technology, skyscrapers like you wouldn't believe. Oh, and I ate something called a panini. Oh. <laughs> oh, but, 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 Wendy. 
Are you okay? I mean, you seem so upset when you left. Oh, it's all over. Everything's changed now. Won't you find out what I'm doing? Oh, 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 oh
And as far as helping me? Oh, please. Here, Willie, have a hundred dollars to pay your insurance this month. Can you say enabler? Well, maybe we should take Charles and Bernard into the future with us. What do we need them? A couple of well-adjusted rule followers with a strong work ethic? <laughs> They'd be useless. Besides, we don't even know their real name. But I'm the quintessential American success story. An archetype of virtue and humility. Ah, uh, sorry, kid. Humility went out the window about the time liposuction cooled on. <laughs> oh, you guys are gonna knock them dead. Oh, really? In the future, personal appearance is everything. Oh, God damn it. Oh. <laughs> Sounds like high school all over again! <laughs> what did I always tell you boys? It's all about being like. Here, I'll show you. Wait, yeah. Uh, Willie Lowman is checked in in 1940s Brooklyn. <laughs> Seven, 17 likes? What is this, Pop? Oh, oh, American ingenuity at its best. The greatest minds of the future invented this. You mean they solved all the bigger problems? Like, like famine and cancer and global economic insecurity? Well, uh, no. <laughs> but this helped people communicate and access information. And when people had limitless access to information, there's no telling what incredible things they could put their minds to. Hey, what's angry birds? <laughs> the point is, the future belongs to the Lomans. We're finally going to be with us. <laughs> the hell you are! <laughs> what are you doing? I'm standing up for sanity and reason. For a world that makes sense. Don't you see? The Lomans can't prosper. It would mean America's become a parody of its former self. Bereft of all its most cherished values. Education. Integrity, hard work, things I devoted myself to. I studied, did it? I worked my way up. I argued a case in front of the Supreme Court, America's enduring symbol of honor, justice, and fair-mindedness. Uh huh. Bernard, don't do it. It isn't worth it. And since when do you carry a gun? <laughs> really? That's what you find improbable. What? No! 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 I see tremendous things for you, boy. Uh, okay, come on, everybody. It's time to go. Huh? Oh, as far as you two go, you can stay here and endure the 1950s. I hope you like watching Milton Berle and drag. <laughs> but, Pop, they just tried to kill us. Uh, don't worry. McCarthyism starts next week. Huh. And Poindexter here is a member of the ACLU. He's going to have plenty explaining to do. <laughs> okay, huddle up, everybody. Oh, wait, uh, where's the car? Oh, we don't need it. If this app will load already. Oh, Willie, you, you should. Sure we should go. I mean, there's something about this just feels all wrong. Will you stop interrupting? Hey, I've been uh, losing weight, Pop. Did you notice? Yeah, Pilates is good, too. Really wants oh, the core. Yeah. <laughs> oh, OK, here we go. Oh, Hang on. man. Hey, you know, maybe I'll get into investment banking. I got a good feeling about the housing market. Yeah. Uh, funny how things change, and yet kind of don't. I have to admit. This all seems pretty illogical. <laughs> logic? Where we're going, we won't need logic. Uh...